Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am very excited to show you this game. This is game two of the finals of the War of the Ring 2022 World Tournament. We are in game two because Galahad B won game one as the free people, and Rex O V is now playing Shadow. And if Galahad wins, then he wins the whole tournament. And if Rex wins, then we'll go to a game three. So I have not seen this game. I do not know what is going to happen. So we will watch it together and I'll analyze as we go. So we can see at the beginning that free people drew Immerhill of Dol Amroth. I think that's a perfectly nice starting strategy card. So in case they roll a Palantir, they'll have something useful to play. And Shadow, two nice cards. You know, Return Valinor, not particularly playable for the card effect. And if you've ever seen a game where it was played productively, I would love to see that log. But the combat effect is obviously good, and it's useful to have a... Uh, army card in case you go after Lorien and Power Too Great gets played. So Nazgul Strike, perfectly useful once the Fellowship gets revealed. So let's see, I'm guessing no eyes. Okay, Galahad allocates one eye, rolls one, and this is great. I think you want one or two eyes and then obviously get your two musters. So this is good and also reasonable for free people. So the Palantir is going to go for, uh, almost certainly go for Emeril of Dol Amroth. And these musters are going to almost certainly go to get Saruman. And then I would expect a strategy card draw, but I guess we will see. All right, Rex starts off by passing. Makes sense. No reason to reveal what you're going to do. And then Isengard goes to war. We get Immerhill of Dol Amroth played. And now Spirit of Mordor. This is not a playable muster card. And so this muster will be used most likely to muster somebody toward war. But uh, Scouts is obviously a useful effect to have early. So, okay. We, uh, Shadow gets Baradur moving toward Gorgoroth, and there's a convention, I think, that you end up putting these five units in a separate area, even though they're all in Gorgoroth together, and this is really an eight-unit army. M m some players keep it separate just because they're about to move it somewhere else, so I expect we'll see that in a moment. Fellowship moves, and I think it makes sense in case you get hit and Gandalf uh, is gone to a two-reveal or something like that, then... Um, this this muster can be used by Strider to hide. All right, first movement, a miss. And then Saruman shows up. And I guess that was a just to be safe because if, um, if the free people had gotten a hit on the first move and they had... Um, Mirror of Gladril in hand, then free people could use the uh, muster die with an elven ring to turn this last character die into a Will of the West and get Gandalf turn one. But that was a very corner case situation, but why not play around it? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So um, Saruman shows up. That makes sense. Fellowship moves again and gets missed again. So this is this is a nice start for everybody. Um, Shadow draws a strategy card, as expected, and Pits of Mordor is a very nice, I think that's a perfectly nice starting um, card. I don't know, maybe it makes sense to draw it before um, moving this one army, but I, that's very minor. Okay, and then um, Rex musters the north one toward war. That's interesting. I'm not sure... Um, if that would be my top choice. I mean, if you do get the North to war, it can do a very nice job defending the dew line. I don't know that you're going to be in time, and it may just be that you're going to make it easier for Shadow to get the Witch King. So I guess we'll see. All right. Um, yep, and we're going towards Lorien. And I don't know, maybe that maybe that muster sort of scared um, scared Shadow away from, from going up north. I, I don't know. Uh, so that's interesting. I guess we'll see what happens. It looks at the moment like Shadow is going after Gondor and Lorien and then presumably Rohan. 
I mean, obviously it's still too early to tell for sure, but that's what it's looking like just from those initial moves. Okay, so Lure of the Ring, Horde from the East. Horde from the East obviously can be useful in taking Erebor, taking Woodland Realm, and also it's a very useful combat card. We'll see how, how soon the Southrons and Easterlings get toward war. Lure of the Ring is always a little tricky. Um, I, I would be surprised if they got to play it for the combat or for the card effect, but I guess we'll see. All right, Deadman of Dunharrow, Power of Tom Bombadil, obviously very nice now that the North has been mustered once. If you can get the North activated, then this can help you get the North to war pretty efficiently. All right, one eye and a reasonable rule. I think you would want a few more army movements, but it's not horrible, and two more musters will be useful. So that's not too bad. And then normal, fairly average roll. I will say that free people has, have not gotten any Wills of the West or any army musters yet. Um, and so they haven't quite been able to get their troops into position. And even if you do lose Gandalf, you can't get him here. So, and with Deadman of Dunharrow, there are actually quite a few ways to get um, Strider, if you, if you get a Will of the West, um, you know, with a roll. Anyway, all right, let's move on. So this is interesting here. I'm a little surprised that free people is moving, are moving right away. Um, I guess you know that you're going to move and you don't want to give Shadow additional chances to draw more character cards in case you get revealed. All right, so we move and get hit this time. That's the relatively unlikely only on a six and then a two so that's that's fine right you didn't get revealed into moria you've lost gandalf obviously it'd be nice to have roll of will of the west but that's how it goes in the base game all right so gandalf goes away strider is guide um sauron goes to war and now um free people start passing pits of mordor get played very useful and we powered up minus Morgul and Moria and Mount Gundabad and armies get moving more and on to Dagger Lad. Fellowship moves again here and I think we're just moving now. I, I don't know exactly why we're moving now. I guess you get to see sort of where Shadow is going after if it makes sense where, where you're gonna muster. So gets hit again and a three. I'm assuming that's just normal corruption because we don't want to risk losing Strider. And a random. Okay, so a random here was a little risky, um, but it certainly is nice to get the Hobbit because now you can be prepared for Fear Fire Foes or a... Um, or Book of Mazarbal. So that's actually a really nice draw there. And you're almost in some ways happy to have the two corruption because if you draw any, I mean, obviously you don't want any corruption, but in this situation, it having already drawn the three, it's not bad to have a little corruption because it puts you closer to out of range of Morgul Wound. And if you get some healing, you can then use it productively early on, like something like Athelos. Okay, armies get going toward Dimrald Dale. Clearly Lorien's gonna get besieged. And now what is Rex going to muster? You have two musters to use and you see that Shadow probably does not have any more movement to do. So on one hand, you don't want to facilitate the Witch King. But on the other hand, if you can get some defense going toward Lorien, that might really help you. So, you know, this is an example of if the elves had been mustered instead of the North, then at the end of this turn, you could potentially get the elves to war or close to war. I guess the risk is then you you turn on the Witch King and you probably don't want to turn on the Witch King. So maybe it's, maybe it's a moot point. I don't know exactly what to do productively here. I guess you muster the North once or Gondor or Rohan. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like elves are gonna be much help, but I guess there is a risk. If you don't muster the elves at all, then this army can march all the way up to Woodland Realm before you've mustered them at all. And then you're really, um, you're giving away a lot of victory points. I don't know. What would you muster here if it were you? 
I think I would muster Gondor. I think I would muster Gondor once, and I think I would muster... Maybe the North again. The North is a yeah yeah that's probably that's probably what I would do. It's hard to say. Okay, let's see. So Gondor got mustered, and then Shadow drew a strategy card, and then Rohan. Okay, I think Rohan can also make sense. You want to be prepared to defend that. And um, Southrons and Easterlings get mustered one toward war. Okay, round three, reasonable start for everybody. Swords and Ariador, not a particularly useful card at this point in the game. And there are two Ent cards. So obviously free people wanted to roll a Will of the West last round. Uh, they certainly would like to roll a Will of the West this round. Um, they've actually gotten zero Wills of the West so far this game. And what do you discard here? I'm guessing Lure of the Ring or maybe Morgul Wound if you're not going for Corruption. But I would, I would probably guess Lure of the Ring. We'll see. Okay, Hill Trolls. I would not have expected that. So I feel like Hill Trolls is a pretty powerful uh, reinforcement ability. And it's a decent combat effect. Um, but I guess the that Shadow is interested in cycling some of these... I, I don't know, cycling some of these combat cards? Or they're just preparing to try and dish out some corruption to the Fellowship uh, and still keep that an active an active threat. All right, that was that was cool to see. I would not have expected we come to kill getting uh, hill trolls getting discarded there. All right, one eye. Oh, interesting. So the fellowship could declare into Dimrel Dale. Um, it avoids a potential Balrog in Moria. It avoids a potential extra tile from Moria, but it exposes them to a whole bunch of extra extra um, shadow cards. So. Um, I think in some ways it makes sense to stay there and hope that you get a Will of the West, particularly because in a round where you're going to devote a Will of the West to Gandalf, if you roll it, then you're less likely to get a bunch of movement. So, you know, risking one move at sixes is probably reasonable and then hopefully getting Will of the West. All right, let's see what happens to free people. All right, there was one eye allocated and then really not the best roll, I would say. I mean, I guess one muster is okay. You can get the Witch King if you put um, somebody to war, but it, it'll be, I guess you can put Gondor to war. Um, all right, so let's see what free people roll. All right, so this is a perfectly nice roll for free people. And um, I would expect probably as Shadow that I would get Gondor to war so that I can get the Witch King. Um, and then because the free people did not roll any um, musters, I'm not really risking too much. I can probably still get um, Minas Tirith under siege relatively painlessly. I guess we'll see. Um, okay, let's see what happens. So free people, I think you probably end up passing, but we'll see. All right, moving right away. Okay, you know you're going to want to move. That's a guaranteed movement. And I guess if free people, I mean, if Shadow is going to play a bunch of cards or draw more cards, then you want to, you'd rather do that sooner in the turn than later. All right, three um, dice, miss on a six. I think that's still in free people's favor to get missed. So not crazy. And then um, let's see, they're joking about Shadow going after Grey Havens. All right, we see the move towards Gondor, and then we see the move toward Lorien. So this is still relatively efficient for, for Shadow. Um, they're rolling a few more eyes or a few more Palantirs than they want, but it's not horrible. Um, you know, these. this is an example. If you you have these two um, Palantirs and you can't actually play Morgul Wound, Lore of the Ring, or Nazgul Strike productively, I mean, you could play Nazgul Strike just to move your Nazgul around, but that's probably not worth it. So... Um, it's not entirely clear what you're going to end up playing. Um, I guess, I don't, I don't know. Um, if you mustered the South rounds and Easterlings toward war, then you could play Horde from the East and maybe that's not bad. And you just wait a turn for the Witch King. Um, 
another idea would be plate will look high somewhere and continue. So yeah, that's yeah, Hill Trolls was playable, but I guess you don't know that you're gonna get a roll like this. Okay. Um I'm surprised here that free people aren't passing, but I guess they're gonna play what are they playing here? Swords and Ariador? Power of Tom Bombadil? I guess we'll see. Okay, Swords and Ariador. And the Red Arrow, great. And that's really nice because they had already mustered um, Rohan once. And so that's actually a really nice um, play because now you can get Gondor, or you can get Rohan one away from war. And then um, when Fords of Ising gets attacked, you'll be able to muster in Helm's Deep. So Rohan is looking harder harder to take. I think this is um, Shadow is going just a little too slowly, and the Fellowship is making kind of nice progress, pretty nice progress, I would say. Um, turn three Gandalf is is good. All right, so all right, Asgiliath to get Gondor toward war. And now, do you play? Do you play the scouts here or not? The chances of getting two hits are relatively low, and um, Shadow is not playing a card. So I don't know. I think my inclination would be to just save it. You know, it's not, it's, it's you might feel a little bad about discarding Tom Bombadil later, but you are going to play Red Arrow. Um, so you're only going to end up discarding one card and saving the scouts for a later situation. Um, Fords of Eisen could be good. I don't know. Getting the units into Pilar gear could be nice too. Okay, so um, they do play scouts and they retreat into Minas Tirith. I'm surprised. I'm a little surprised by that. I would be more inclined to retreat into Pilar gear. Um, you do risk. You do risk the idea that um, Shadow could have Nazgul or abroad, um, or Ringwraiths are abroad or um, Black Captain Commands, in which case Minas Tirith gets besieged with less than full capacity. So that, that does make sense. I, I, I get that. Um, okay, they leave one behind in North Athelion. I don't fully... Ah, right. I didn't understand why until we remember that they have these Palantirs that are not useful to play. So they're going to play Ulug High into Asgiliath efficiently. And then... Um, and then they will draw, presumably draw another card, I guess. Um, they're not going to have particularly productive things to do with that um, with that last Palantir, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, free people pass, and then we get the Ulag High and Asgiliath, as we expected, and then Gandalf shows up. I think Fangorn is the only reasonable choice. Um, you already have a Hobbit over in the north in case um, you draw Fearfire Foes or Book of Mazar Bowl. And, um, and that's interesting. So this, this is, I think a minor inaccuracy by shadow because, um, it activates Gon Oh, Gondor was already active. Okay. doesn't matter. It was not an inaccuracy at all. I was going to say that it, it turned on red arrow, but red arrow was already turned on. Um, Gondor is already at war. So that is not an inaccuracy at all, but I kind of wonder yeah, I guess free people knows that you're going to get the Witch King, so it actually keeps them more in mystery by saving this Palantir. But realistically, you're just going to, um, you're almost certainly going to just draw a card. I guess there's a chance that free people are going to give you a ring and move again, but I don't, I don't see that happening. Okay, so uh, Witch King shows up, Gandalf is here, and now as free people, I think you got the Red Arrow. Um, that's clearly, yep. And now Rohan is one away for, from war. This is a very nice defense of Rohan. And Shadow draws a character card. So Shadow is definitely um, realizing that they're in a slow, sort of slower military situation. And they're going for <clears throat> um, some corruption. And it's an interesting play. You know, I, there isn't a great place for um, the free people to heal. If you stop by Lorien, then you're wasting a movement. You do heal one. Um it does sort of bait the attack into Lorien. Um, so you're going to get like one movement that's safe. And maybe you'd prefer to be in Rivendell. So this is interesting. Would you declare in, um, would you declare the fellowship into Lorien as the free people? So we have all three scouts, all three scouts um, that free people has drawn. So that's quite nice for them. 
and um, Shadow has a bunch of stuff here. They did get Swarm of Bats. What do you end up discarding as uh, Shadow? I think, I don't know. I think I would get rid of, I would, I mean, if I'm going for a corruption strategy, I don't know. This is a tough call. I'm going to just go with Lore of the Ring and Swarm of Bats because I'm planning on a corruption strategy. That's that's my thinking. Um, I'll keep four character cards. I think keeping five character cards is probably overkill, so we'll see. Um, they end up... <laughs> They're making a joke that I wouldn't approve of uh, Galahad cheating, which obviously he is not going to. He's going to discard two. Let's see what they are. Drum roll. Uh, swarm of bats. Okay, so I called that one. And all right, Nazgul strike. That's interesting. I, you know, free people will will probably play around Nazgul strike in that they won't play Mithril Coat and Sting too soon. Um, but I do think it is a powerful card. Um, it's very likely an extra hunt tile if you, um, save it for the right moment and it can help you reposition the Nazgul. You're not guaranteed to play it. Um, but yeah, i I probably would have saved that over Lore of the Ring, but maybe, maybe Shadow is thinking they're going to use Lore of the Ring for the combat effect to cycle into more, um, character cards. Um, and, and maybe if you're really going for the corruption strategy, maybe you get rid of one of these deadly strifes. I mean, it's really hard to discard a deadly strife. Uh, it's just such a powerful combat effect. So, okay. Um, I, I love that there are these intricacies of um, these discard decisions in which card draws, you know, when you're when you're given a role that's not an optimal role, you have a Palantir, just that one extra uh, deck that you're drawing from or what you're trying to accomplish can really, um, can really make a difference in the game. Okay, so one eye allocated, and that's interesting that um, um, he, uh, f the free people did not declare. So clearly Lorien is going to get attacked, but maybe you want to avoid the um, extra tile draw from Moria. Maybe you want the heal in Lorien. I don't know. Um and I think if you force Shadow to commit to attacking Lorien now when they might not want to, um, you end up wasting attack in, or, that they could have otherwise used in Gondor. And so, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Okay, so Shadow gets a really nice roll. That's what they want. They don't have a lot of character <laughs> character dice, and they were, they were sort of going for a character strategy. Um, but they do get a lot of attacks. Um, and two musters, which can be useful to start to power up Isengard, I would think, or um, or maybe Southrons and Easterlings and Eastrune to take Erebor. So there are a lot of options, a lot of options with that role. Let's see what free people get. Okay, so this is the sort of situation that can really um, help turn the tide a little more for, for Shadow. Um, you know, free people definitely want to be doing more than one movement this turn against only one eye. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an army muster, uh, I mean, a ring being used here. So I think, um, clearly you're going to start off with a muster in Minas Tirith. Uh, I would probably just put an elite there though. Maybe you put a leader and then something else, uh, in Pilar gear or Dol Amroth. So we'll see. All right, muster an elite. I think that's that's certainly what I would do. That makes sense. And then Minas Tirith goes under siege, and free people has a choice whether or not to um, do the field battle. And obviously, if they knew that, uh, and and this is the extra, you know, right? There are two extra hit points here, so I think they would. I would not do a field battle here, though. I do have advantageous position, so maybe it's maybe it's worth going for it. Uh, it'd be certainly a little risky. So I probably would just go into siege and let those two units get go back to reinforcement. All right. So this is I would say this is a risky moment. Um, we expect to see power of Tom Bombadil, but um, I think I would rather just get into my siege safely and then use power of Tom Bombadil against a strategy card once I'm once I'm in the siege. Okay. Um, so Galahad is clearly going to play one of these strategy cards. The deadly strife is going to be very deadly. 
And um, yep, so there we go. And then Shadow is getting two hits so far, five hits. Yeah. So this is this is really the risk of staying that field battle. You'd rather you'd much rather just be in the siege. Now, as it turns out, if this were you know fighting in the stronghold, there would have also been four hits. So it doesn't it doesn't really change that much. Um, all right. So that was a huge swing for Shadow. No, still got four hits. Okay, so four hits back. Deadly strife indeed. And um, so that uh, stronghold got beat up quite a bit. If you get some, if free people get something like uh, guards of the citadel or something like that, then you know they could turn it around. All right, they're moving with the will of the west, and shadow misses them, and now shadow is attacking into Minas Tirith. They play Deadly Strife again. Oh, what did they redraw? They redrew, they redrew Great Host. Okay, so that can be a useful finisher. Another Deadly Strife, and that gets three hits. And then Shadow gets, or Free People get four hits back. But um, Shadow can now finish it off with the Great Host. Did they take the right number of units? Okay, and then are they going to press? I would probably expect to see a press just to get this done. Yep, and now we see a great host. And there's the great host. Okay, so they played... So um, free people played Sudden Strike. So now it's theoretically possible that uh, sh the great host will not trigger. And I don't know... I. I don't think that Strider is getting separated this game. I would think that Strider is just staying in the Fellowship, so I can see why I might want to save Dead Men of Dawn. I mean, I might want to play it here, but part of me wonders, this is such a powerful effect, and you could really wreck some havoc, wreak some havoc in, um, in Gondor with this, uh, showing up in Pilar gear and, um, you know, just building up an army quite fast and potentially retaking Minas Tirith. So, all right, let's see what happens. Uh, free people do get a hit right here. So if they get another hit and Shadow doesn't, then they manage to avoid the de the, the Great Host, which would be pretty amazing. Uh, Shadow misses. This is an awesome, awesome battle in Minas Tirith. Uh, Shadow misses. Let's see if free people hit. And free people hit. Oh, nice. What an exciting battle. Holy cow. Avoiding the great host is huge. All right. So um, now this is an amazing situation for, uh, for free people. Do they uh, potentially attack out of Minas Tirith to try and kill the Witch King? Uh, you know, you have to roll five. But then if that happens, you can start to then muster up in Minas Tirith again. You have about a 50-50 shot of killing the Witch King here. Um, if you sortie out, what do you do? 50-50 um, shot of killing the Witch King does sound pretty pleasant. If you just sit and wait, then Shadow is going to be able to reinforce this. You won't really be in time. Another another idea to try would be to muster once with an elite in Lasarnach. And then you could use your other muster to attack into Minas Tirith. And then what will happen is Shadow will have to retreat out of Minas Tirith with the Witch King somewhere. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what to do here, but this is exciting times. Exciting times in Gondor. All right, so we're moving armies. Yeah, it's okay. I like I like the muster better or the straight up attack. Um, but I guess I also want to get my armies into Ed from Edoras to Westamnet so I can be ready for that. So it it is an efficient play, and this is this is a little bit safer bet. You only have a one third chance of hitting the Witch King this way, though. Um, so I think. 
shadow might just, I mean, free. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what shadow will do. Okay. So, um, okay. If I had looked at shadow's cards, we would have known what, what shadow is going to do, which is that they're going to get an extra unit there, which is obviously uh, huge. So that fixes a lot of things. Um, and is good for, good for shadow. Okay, so Southrons and Easterlings are now at war. And um, I think Shadow, let's see what Shadow's going to do. Muster some Nas. No, an Elite. Okay, so that was an Elite in Minus Morgul. And uh, moving some armies. Moving some armies. This is interesting. I'm not sure why Shadow doesn't want to just take care of Minas Tirith, but I guess it's just a little safer. And um, you have these efficient army movements here anyway, so might as well use them. And then next turn when you get some um, palin or some character dice, you can use the character dice to attack. Seems okay. I would be a little scared to leave Minas Tirith until next round in case they top deck um, Guards of the Citadel. So, all right. Um... That's interesting. So free people get Rohan all the way to war. Uh, and that will certainly give them a chance to um, defend defend, and also do, do shenanigans like um, Path of the Woeses if they draw it. Um, I don't know exactly when Shadow will be attacking. So I might have been tempted to use my Palantir first. I don't know. Okay, so let's see what they do. Osgiliath gets attacked. And um, interesting. I'm not sure that I would have played the scouts there, but they go to Druden Forest. Um, okay, I don't know why why I don't just go to Pilargear. Pilargear is a nice place to defend. Uh, and here we, get, here we get the extra movement. This is only hitting on a five, but they do get hit and they do get revealed finally on step seven. Um, and that's also a little bit of a, I, like, if you knew you were going to do that, seeing what Shadow had, when they, given that they already had attacks, why not go ahead and move first so that you could hide here with Strider if you wanted to? Um, okay, so that's seven. They go through Moria, and we get a one. I'm assuming they're just going to take that, and now they're out of range of Morgul Wound. And um, Corsairs of Umbar are prepared, and that is that. Cruel Weather is a very nice draw by Shadow. Definitely want to see that here. And Guards of the Citadel, top deck Guards of the Citadel. So at this point, probably it's not enough. I mean, certainly not enough to save Minas Tirith, but it could, it could be annoying. Um, three hit points is not going to make or break that, but it's kind of funny to draw it there. Okay, so Galahad allocates one eye, and they roll... Two more, but they get a nice roll. This is another this is another pretty pleasant roll. And ooh, again only one movement. So um free people are definitely not moving as much as they would like. They start with a muster into Dol Amroth, which is certainly correct in case um Corsairs of Umbar are coming. And um Minas Tirith gets attacked. And I, I think that's the right call because um the guards of the citadel will not will not save Minas Tirith. So it would have been interesting to see what the version of this game was that had um, the Witch King dead and Minas Tirith besieged uh, with much many fewer leadership. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, so um, threats and promises is the combat card. And they get the hit they need and no hits back. So there we go. And now what do you do as um, as free people? You're mustering. I guess you want to get some leadership into Dol Amroth. Uh, just in case Corsairs come. I might be tempted to wait. Maybe you're hiding here. This, is, this might be a hide and then save the Palantir for Smeagol Helps Nice Master or Ents in case um, Rohan is moved on. All right, so we're using it for an actual muster. Um, 
and then Shadow is still saving the character die, even though Fellowship is revealed. Many Kings, I guess that was the redraw from the combat card. Many Kings, so we're getting ready to attack Erebor, I guess, or the Woodland Realm. And so this is, right, this is a little bit of that situation where I didn't didn't declare in Lorien, and therefore um, the Elves are nowhere close to war. And now this army, one, two, three, can besiege, um, can besiege Woodland Realm. And there's a ring, actually. So this is one, two, three, four. One to East Rune, two to Vale of Karnan, three to Dale, four to Woodland Realm. So that could easily be a problem for free people to get this besieged. And you use the you use the last scouts on getting this unit from Osgiliath to Druid and Forest, which I think was probably less important than um, defending Dale. It will put the North to war, but I'm not sure how much that matters at this point. So, all right, I guess we're going to see, but I think... It's not looking good for Woodland Realm, and you could even get you could even get to Erebor without um, without even using. No, you still have to use a ring because there's no leadership over here. Okay, so um, free people pass. We get East the army gathered in East Rune. Uh, all right, so we're hiding with the Palantir die. Not sure exactly what we're saving that muster for. I guess we can muster up in Rohan, so that's good. Um, Iron Hills, all right. So I guess Shadow is going to plan on using a ring. Iron Hills gets attacked, one hit, none, none back. And now dwarves are one away from war. Fellowship moves once and gets hit and revealed. That's obviously good. And then here we play Lure of the Ring. So Fellowship is starting to get higher on Corruption. If you hit Strider, that could be great. This is a, an average of two Corruption play right here. So I guess Shadow is sort of play, slow playing all of these character cards a little bit just to see how the hunt goes. And now that they see they have some chances with the hunt, they're going to start trying to hurt the fellowship. Okay. Gimli. See you later, Gimli. All right. And now um, Shadow or free people muster the dwarves to war to require Shadow to use a ring to besiege Erebor. And there's the ring and Erebor gets besieged. Okay. So I don't know. I think as... I think as Shadow, I probably would have gone after um, Dale and Woodland Realm because that is a weaker, a weaker situation. You might, e even if Dale survives, then you still have a relatively weaker army in Woodland Realm. It does put the North to war. It is one extra attack. So maybe, maybe not worth it. All right. All right. Balrog is a great draw to be able to take out Lorien. And um, let's see what free people draw. So clearly they're going to discard wizard staff. Yeah, and it's interesting last turn using that, that muster to sort of just force the attack on Erebor in the ring. It's nice to make sure Shadow gets rid of a ring. On the other hand, I want to be able to get into... Mordor this round as free people. Okay. So again, some nice rolls by uh, Shadow. A, a little high on musters. I think you probably don't want to be this high on musters, but you might have a chance to crash into Helm's Deep. Um, all right. Oh my gosh. So sh free people have gotten really substantially low movement for the last many turns. Um... They're minus two on wills and minus three on character dice. Um, Shadow is plus four on musters, but I think that's not nearly as hard for Shadow as it, as it is for free people. But that is just a brutal roll. If they had gotten even a single movement, 
they would have had chances to get into Moranon. Now, maybe they would have been stalled by cruel weather, but at least they would have threatened it. So um, this is just, that's just really painful for, for free people. All right, so they start by hiding with a palantir, and then shadow musters an elite in North Down. So where do we think, where do we think this is going? Are we going after uh, Rivendell, maybe? Are we going after the Shire to get an extra, um, to go for all the cities? So if we have Erebor, Minas Tirith, that's four. And then Lorien is six. And then all the cities, maybe? I don't know exactly where this is going. I guess you have to muster somewhere. Uh, and you don't really want to go after Rohan because that seems pretty hard. Maybe you do march over to Grey Havens. I mean, then you could get hit by Cairden ships, but elves aren't even at war yet. So maybe you could. All right, let's see what happens. It's exciting. All right, we get another elite in North Downs. I mean, North Dunland. A third elite in North Dunland. Okay, we're playing Ents here as free people. Um, why bother? I mean, I, I guess. Um, we'll end up playing Smeagol Helps Nice Master. We're going to clear out some cards from our hand. Might be tempted to just hold them, but okay. We can weaken or think. There's also a crazy situation that we could kill Saruman right here. So, all right. We're not killing Saruman, but that's two. And then uh, zero. And then Smeagol Helps Nice Master. Okay, so that was a little below average against, uh, against Saruman. We would expect three, and we only got two, but okay. It didn't really matter too much, I don't think. Um, all right, and then a fourth elite in North Dunland. Let's see where that army is going to go. Elves get mustered once. Yeah, I guess I guess this army in North Dunland can come up to Rivendell pretty effectively. It's one, two, three moves to Rivendell. It's one, two, three, four moves to Grey Havens. Do you take an extra move to go after Grey Havens? I think you worry about um, Cairden's ships if you go after Grey Havens. Oh, and also the dwarves are at war. So Grey Havens is crazy. Don't do that. Um, so clearly Rivendell is being attacked. And um, I think that's a that's a perfectly reasonable plan. Um, I guess it may, maybe it's the Shire also. Instead, I mean. Um, but I think, I think I like Rivendell better. And this is the risk with... Um, leaving the elves so far away from war for so long. Um, you know, it's one thing if Shadow gets one elven stronghold. I think it's another for Shadow on turn six to be able to besiege the elves. Um, I think this is this is also two elven strongholds. I, I think this is also a good example of Shadow using their um, muster dice effectively. Um, you know, obviously free people got really substantially bad luck by not getting into Mordor this round. I mean, there, there are many turns in a row where they rolled significantly below average um, on movement. So, you know, I think the last, there was a turn of one movement, a turn of one movement, and now a turn of zero movement, um, I think. So I don't know exactly what the distribution is. What are the chances of getting one movement? But one, one, and zero all in a row is is very... Um, very unlikely. Okay, so uh, Shadow gets armies moving, and then elves go one away from war. Okay, I guess they'll be able to muster once either in Lorien or in um, Rivendell. And here's another example of if you had this regular in Pilar gear, then the attacks would be slightly less efficient. So, um, okay, undoing that and instead mustering. Okay, mustering once in Pilar gear and in Westamnet. All right. And then armies moving. I guess maybe this regular is gonna these regulars are gonna come threaten Dale or just 
who knows what, you don't really have anything else you're particularly excited to move. And then Wisdom of Elrond, okay, to get elves to war, or one away from war, I guess. All right, so that was a nice nice little clever play by uh, Free People. Obviously, really not happy not getting the fellowship in, or at least threatening to get it in. All right, and then Foul Thing gets Bormir. And one is exactly what Shadow wants to draw on the hunt. So that that is the perfect... Um, I mean, I guess a one reveal would be better, but that's certainly certainly a good draw. And now we go to round seven. We have help unlooked for and uh, gray company. Shadow discards Worn of Sorrow and Toil because there are just not very many people left in the fellowship. And fellowship, okay, zero eyes because the fellowship did not move and Shadow feels like they can win in two rounds, which I think is right. It's very unlikely that the fellow, maybe even impossible, that the Fellowship could destroy the ring in one round once they make it to Mordor. So, um, yeah. All right, no eyes. And now free people get enough movement. They move once, and uh, Rivendell gets attacked. Lorian's going to get mustered once. Lorian gets attacked. These are pretty forced moves. And now free people start passing. Um, you know, I might be tempted to move one more time here in case there's Nazgul search and also cruel weather, but it doesn't matter. Okay, Dale gets attacked. I guess we're just giving up on we're giving up on Erebor and going after Woodland Realm could be or we're just we're taking Dale now and maybe maybe we'll go after Woodland Realm I guess we'll see uh one hit in Dale one hit back all right Dale has been captured aha so um people might have seen before me what uh Shadow was doing there but they're gonna get the mouth so now that everybody is at war, um, Shadow can get the mouth. It's going to give them an extra attack. And um, yeah, that's that's a nice nice situation for, for Shadow. All right. And it's useful to get that victory point as well. So at this point, we see Rivendell, Lorien, Erebor, Minas Tirith. That's eight. And then Dale and Pilargear is 10 and it's going to be pretty hard for sh for free people to retake that other than um maybe dane ironfoot's guard would be pretty useful um i don't think rivendell is going to hold it seems unlikely that lorian is going to hold because of balrog though, though maybe it could um but it seems like mustering up in wooden realm and maybe retaking dale could be could be an effective strategy because if you manage to retake one of these cities then um, then you end up with uh, kind of, well, not not Pilargir, but if you manage to retake Dale and Erebor has been whittled down, then it's kind of hard to to get Edoras. I mean, maybe you can from Minas Tirith. So yeah, maybe maybe either way. All right, so free people starts passing. We get the mouth. Um, Nazgul moved to Lorien and. Um, yeah. They fill up. So uh, leadership is filled in Rivendell and in Lorien. We're going to use the mouth to attack in Lorien, playing a character card. Uh, obviously, that's Balrog. And maybe you redraw into Nazgul or uh, ring rates are abroad or black cap and commands. That seems not impossible. Um, Durin's Bane gets two hits, a little above average there. And then, oh my God, four sixes and uh, no hits back from free people. So um, that was obviously a above average combat in Lorien. 
And that was the place that uh, free people had the best chance of surviving. Um, so uh, Lorian has fallen. That was obviously not what free people wanted to see. And now the fellowship moves and is obviously safe. Candles of Corpses gets played here. Okay. Um, I might have preferred to play On On They Went just to get that into the hunt pool. But yeah, if you pump up corruption now, then you're more likely to force uh, free people to lose Strider. And then, I mean, to take random. So it could be good. Um, one hit. And free people obviously will move again. They cannot risk, um, they cannot risk cruel weather. And then, uh, and I guess, I guess, uh, shadow knew that was going to happen. And therefore they just knew they were going to play both, um, candles of corpses and on, on they went. So didn't really matter the order too much. And now what do you do as free people? Do you have anything useful to do? Um, I guess you draw a strategy card hoping to draw um, the Rivendell reinforcement or uh, w or the Woodland Realm reinforcement, the Randall Sarchers. Yeah. Let's look. Or or um, also Dane Ironfoot's guard. So there are, there are a few here. Okay, so they get um, King Brand's men. They did draw a strategy card. They get King Brand's men. And then uh, Shadow starts mustering up in North Rune just to be safe, which is clearly the really the only place that Shadow or Free People is going to have much of a chance to defend. And um, we get Horn of Gondor, not particularly useful at this point, and Aomer. Um, yeah, just not useful here. And even if um, Free People had you know some way of putting Gandalf somewhere to defend, it's just not not going to help. Um, so Rohan did, you know, defend itself very well. We did not see any battles in Rohan. I predicted Rohan early in the game. Um, I would not have necessarily expected Rivendell and Erebor, but I think Shadow did a nice job of, of attacking the places that were, that were weak and using the musters efficiently when, when they had them to, to make, to make new threats and attack weak, weaker places. All right, so Fellowship makes it in, and um, Shadow allocates one eye, rolls one more, and gets one, two, three attacks on nine dice, which is below average. We'd expect four and a half attacks. So they m might be able to win this round, but maybe not. Oh my gosh, and free people again get just ridiculously low movement. So... Um, you know, I guess it's not that crazy. Last round, they got three movements, so not not totally crazy. All right, but this is not this is not what they want to see. Uh, all right, let's find out. So free people start by moving. They get two in a reveal. I think you take a random here. Maybe you just take two. Isildur's Bane has not been played yet, so it is risky. Um, I think you end up taking a random. Okay, so that was a random, and Strider gets drawn. That's going to be quite bad for the Fellowship. Um, yeah, do you end up... Would it have been better to um, just take the two to guarantee that you can hide? What's the hunt pool like? You're not necessarily going to be able to use Strider that efficiently. Um, with later moves, but presumably I would think you would be moving again later this round and then you could lose Strider to a three, all of these eyes and all of these threes. So maybe you risk it. It will be nice to get to Gollum with these tiles in the pool, the two reveal, the one reveal and the, and the zeros. Um, so, okay. Clearly bad news for the Fellowship. And, um, all right, so Shadow starts off by attacking uh, Rivendell, and they play Devilry, and let's see what happens. 
So Shadow has rolled uh, four hits again. They've rolled a lot of sixes. And they have completely taken out um, Rivendell. So um, both of the Elven strongholds fell incredibly easily to Shadow. I think they were they had very good chances in Rivendell. I don't think that's unexpected, but um, you know, it could have been a little closer. Uh, though I guess I guess Rivendell doesn't matter too much because I don't see that being saved in any way. If um, if Lorien had held out, you know that that had better chances and um Celeborn's Galadrim had not been played yet so okay uh free people uh okay draw Celeborn's Galadrim not the most useful card at this moment and um Nazgul move to Erebor and then Elven Elite in Woodland Realm. I wonder about just drawing again here. You know, if you draw one more time, then you have a chance to draw uh, Dane Ironfoot's guard. And then if the first round of combat doesn't go, you know, really well and Shadow doesn't press, you have a chance to reinforce. So Erebor, let's see what happens. Uh, Cruel is death to cycle that and then shield wall. And let's see if Shadow's good luck continues. Yeah, they get three hits. That is, I think, a bit above average. I mean, they did have Cruel as Death, but I think that's above average. And um, free people get no hits back. <laughs> free people have not been uh, fighting well. And there's a press in combat. And we get Relentless Assault. Yeah, that's the benefit of not taking any hits. Oh, okay, but Shadow, I mean, free people play Daylight, and therefore Shadow does not take any hits. I might have been tempted to just take them, but okay. It turns out rolling sixes is a good strategy, so <laughs> Galahad just rolls two sixes. Why not? And uh, free people get no hits back. So um, Galahad, I think, is being a good sport talking about... Uh, how lucky they're getting and apologizing for that. And uh, Rex acknowledges that they did get lucky in the beginning of the game. I would say luck is definitely favoring Shadow still in this game, but it is nice to acknowledge the early game luck. And and it's not just about luck because Shadow did have some awkward action rolls and using those, like there was four, there was a four muster round um, and using those in North Dunland was, was definitely uh, an effective um, an effective use of them that resulted in uh, a really nice play in Rivendell. So I, I don't know. I'm a little surprised that um, Shadow didn't play Relentless Assault anyway that round with the hope of trying to finish the game uh, this round. But I guess the situation is if free people hide the fellowship on this action, uh, this round, then they'll have to use an eye for that. And then that final action can, can net shadow the 10 victory points. So free people will not be able to hide and therefore it's nearly impossible for them to win at the start of next round. And as shadow, I think um, Galahad is thinking ahead that you're going to have to not only take Erebor, but also um, defend Dale. So I think they're going to use the mouth of Sauron to, um, try and finish off Erebor and then um, maybe cycle into Black Captain Commands or Ringwraiths or Abroad, in which case you will be able to take out Pilarga this round. And if not, you're still very safe next round. All right, so uh, Fearfire Foes, not a useful card at this point in the game. And um, let's see, Sh Shadow did draw Black Captain Commands. So they will be able to win this round and assuming they can take out Erebor, which seems very likely, and they're going to have uh, Onslaught to be able to do it. Onslaught, Heroic Death, and two hits is enough to take out the Dwarves anyway, even without the Onslaught. And then we get the Black Captain Commands into Pilar Gear with Corsairs of Umbar just for a kicker uh, to take out Pilar Gear. So that is the game. Um, so 
I guess I shouldn't say that's entirely the game. Free People is using a ring to attack out of Woodland Realm into Dale. And then Shadow is going to um, attack back out of Erebor into Dale. So, um, yep, we're just going to see what happens there. So uh, Free People do get a hit in Dale. And now um, Shadow is going to attack back. And, um, yeah, it's a little it's a little interesting. I mean, I think you have really good chances as Shadow here. But I wonder if you... Um, yeah, it's fine. Just, just take it this way. I... I don't know. This is really, really nitpicky because I think Shadow is very likely to win here. But given the state of the Fellowship, what if you just... Um, no, no, it makes sense. You, you just just take back Dale and win. If you if you have if this combat goes poorly for Shadow, um, I do think it'll be a little tricky for them to find their next victory points because. Um, Woodland Realm and Dale will then be able to muster up and defend themselves next round. And the Fellowship can make some progress. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see. I suspect Dale is just going to fall. So we'll see. All right, Dread and Despair and then Valor. Um, all misses on the initial combat roll and attack from the army in Erebor. And then uh, free people get no hits back. And it goes into the next round. Galahad asks if they're going to stay. Uh, yeah, I think you stay if you're going to lose the game, if you retreat. That is a pretty straightforward choice. Okay, so we have more character cards. No quarter. Fair enough. Um, so that is three hits. And free people get no hits back. And then there's a press. And then... Um, all right, so that is the end of the game. Okay, so I don't know exactly. Let's look what they were saying. Congratulations to Galahad for the win. Uh, well played and well deserved. Um, Galahad is the top rated player in the world. So I think ratings, uh, also reflect, uh, playing strength. And I think that while Galahad certainly had some luck go his way in this game, I also think, um, it, it was an efficient use of cards and an efficient use of dice, making the best of what you got, you know, getting the, the mouth one turn early, turning those extra musters into attacks, um, attacking where uh free people were weak so um and a lot of good sort of just timing things about when when you're going after what uh, i'm curious what they said um i feel like there were some comments that the players were making to each other um oh they're just acknowledging they're they're acknowledging the luck um Okay, so um, also congratulations to Rex. I think there was a lot of good sportsmanship, and um, you know, not getting not getting too upset about the moments of of poor luck. And um, second place is obviously a major achievement in a 128 person tournament, so worldwide tournament. So congratulations to both finalists, especially to Galahad. I will be in touch to uh, arrange the plaques so you can proudly show those off. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to review this game. And thank you to everybody for um, who, who watched this. Uh, I want to just show the statistics real quick. So I'm not sure I'm not sure why um, the free people and shadow players statistics are um, merged. Uh, I just don't know why that's happening. But I would be curious to see um, if it was free people or shadow or what the sort of how how things went. Um, 
I could try and do it really quickly. All right, I'm going to do it live on this video to try and um, do a quick analysis of the combat dice because I am curious about that. But if you want to leave the video, then um, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of the day. For anybody who wants to sit around and wait while I um, do some quick math, I will... Um, I will do it now. So what I'm going to do is um, I just copied all of the um, text and now I'm going to sort it and I pasted it and now I'm just going to get where uh, get all of the text where uh, free people rolled and I'm just going to grab all of the rolls and then I'm going to uh, okay, so I got them, and now I'm going to open a new text file. I'm going to get rid of all of the uh, non anything else, and then I'm going to do a search replace on a space and change that to tab. And now I have um, a bunch of um, tabs, uh, numbers separated by tabs. I will paste them into an Excel document. And um, and then I will just do a count. So I'm going to do count, uh, just a count, I guess, or count A. And then I'm going to select everything. And it turns out that Shadow rolled, in this game, 125 dice. And now let's do a count if. So on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, a count if. If... You're seeing how fast my Excel speed is. All right, so uh, select this range, and the, that's the range. I just selected all of the rolls, and I'm counting if it equals that. So they rolled 18 ones, and then I will fill this down in a second, and then we'll get to see the numbers. All right, so we would expect, expected is 125 divided by six is we'd expect them to roll 21-ish uh, of each number. And therefore, I'm just going to make this 21. And therefore, I will do, uh, let's see, this number minus 21. All right. So here is what Shadow actually rolled doing the quick analysis. I don't know if you all will be able to see this. Uh, let's see if I can make this show up uh, here. Okay, I'm just gonna get it. All right, so these are the actual um, shadow uh, die roll expectations that happened in this game. Um, so, you know, obviously that's good. <laughs> that's good at shadow if you're plus five on sixes and plus two on uh, fives. But nonetheless, it's not just about good luck. It's also about good skill, and I don't want to take anything away from Galahad, who is clearly an extra, extremely strong player, uh, being top in the world. So thanks for watching, and uh, have a good rest of the day.